So welcome everyone to another interview uh, of how I learn Arabic stories. And I'm here joined by my brother Rashid Al Madaniyu. MashaAllah. How are you, brother? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, fine, Alhamdulillah. Just so you know, it is Ra Alif Shid Dal, Rashid Al Madani. Rashid Al Madani, Tayyib, MashaAllah. Tayyib, so uh, you guys know how it goes. Uh, you know, I bring you guys. People who went from not knowing Arabic to knowing Arabic, <coughs> and um, and yeah, man, it's, it's always beneficial to hear stories for those who are, you know, at the point where they are willing to learn Arabic, but uh, you know, they get anxious on how it's gonna happen and this and that. So I kind of bring you guys a little bit of an insight of how it is to go from not knowing Arabic to knowing Arabic. So first of all, I would like uh, our brother Rashid to to uh, to introduce himself and tell us a little bit about uh, his upbringing and you know a little bit about you really. Okay. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alim al hakim. This is your brother in Islam Rashid al Madani. Alhamdulillah that uh, Allah blessed me. Uh, to be with you guys, to be uh, to be in the company of Brother uh, Muhammad Sal. I do hope that the name is correctly pronounced. Correctly <laughs> pronounced. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, I'm half of the Quran. Alhamdulillah. By the age of eight, I finished memorizing the uh, Quran, even when I didn't know uh, my own language. So Allah blessed me with that. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Later on, I had intensive sessions between the age of eight and ten in Haram and Nabawi in Medina. And went back to Bangladesh, did uh, my uh, five years of uh, GCSE study, or we could say that it is elementary school study after the primary. Mm -hmm. And later on, I came back to Medina to study my Sanawiya, which is equivalent to A level. That was in Arabic medium. The one that I did in Bangladesh was in Bengali medium, where the languages included English, Bengali, and Arabic. But the medium of teaching was uh, uh, Bengali. So later on, when I went back to Medina, alhamdulillah, I studied Sanawiya. Uh, while I was studying, it included subjects that are read in Arabic. Then, of course, these were just uh, what it was in the A levels in Sanawiya. But later on, in the Jama'a, we also to be subject even in a deeper level because the elements of Arab language in Sanawi vary, these uh, vary in to the elements of learning Arabic at the undergraduate level, the college level. So, Alhamdulillah, later on, we went with Arabic uh, graduate school. <coughs> So, Alhamdulillah, the conversation and also with the group studies, it was focused only in Arabic. Even if you were to say anything in our own language, you would have been told off <laughs> by the teachers. And they encouraged us, encouraged us well, Alhamdulillah. Even if we made mistakes, it didn't matter. You know, the <laughs> and they were something like they would laugh at us when we are even making mistakes talking in Arabic language. So that was rather encouraging for not only me but also other students that I was I was surrounded by. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So currently I'm here, Imam in Ireland. Alhamdulillah, as well as Khatib, as well as teacher of the Quran and Arabic. Alhamdulillah, for both adults as well as children. Here in Ireland, Alhamdulillah, which is the rural parts of Ireland. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so. Oh, that was a really, uh, you know, uh, that was a lot of information in the in the introduction already. Alhamdulillah, barakallah uh, for for that. And uh, so I wanted to ask you because uh, you were telling me that um, that you kind of learned Arabic a little bit in a in a natural way, like you know, your father uh, had the the opportunity to bring you guys to to Medina. So obviously, you know, I can tell you that, that when you are young, you are a, a sponge. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, 
Hello? Sorry, you were saying that my parents brought me to Medina. From there, I couldn't hear because the connection was locked. Okay, so so your 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 parents brought you to Medina, and uh, mm-hmm. and obviously you were young. So and we know that when we young, we kind of absorb everything super fast. So how was your your process of yeah. uh, of uh, you know no, no not knowing Arabic until you were actually to you know just literally conversate uh, you know in the in the in, in the Madani dialect. What was like the time frame? Uh, how was my pro- yeah, sorry. How was my process to what from there? The connection was rather poor. Yeah. What was your your process from not knowing Arabic until you was able to conversate as a you know as a second language or at least really fluent? Well, the thing that I was doing at my young uh, when I was young. There have been moments where, you know, we would, you know, I would cry literally when people laugh at me while I'm making mistakes. Mm. However, there was no, like, uh, basic support from my parents as there was something called nationalism in our family. Mm. But later on, Alhamdulillah, opened their hearts and uh, they started giving me some books that are, <coughs> excuse me, that are in Arabic, alhamdulillah. So I started practicing them even when I was young. No. Even though it was like a basic level, because this, uh, the background that I came from, there was an emphasis that if you don't learn English, if you don't go through the secular studies, secular style of education, then you will have no dignity, you would have no respect in the world, mm-hmm. no reputation, no uh, shukra or whatever. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Whatever the things that they feed you when you are young. No. The, when I memorized the Quran, that really gave them something, you know, that, yeah, at least this son would be able to do something for us when he is old, uh, old enough, at least through the knowledge of Quran. So that encouragement or that opening heart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to my parents let her encourage me to do something, especially the basic Arabic Alphabet, if I may say, even though I was quite late to do the primary education, the word, memorizing it in a way, or as, as you rightly said, that I was fed. Mm-hmm. So uh, memory absorb, uh, my memory absorbed things in a way that I couldn't even imagine. So between the age of 8 and an age of uh, 13, I would rather say, things were not as bumpy as people would assume. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, that... You know, I was really into uh, writing Arabic as well as reading Arabic. And that really supported me, the process that parents were constantly looking up, uh, looking for me and making sure that I'm doing what they hope would be best for me, alhamdulillah, in terms of being a propagator of Al-Islam. So that is something dad wanted me to be, alhamdulillah. So they made sure that whatever the things that are necessary, you know, they were provided, even when I was in Bangladesh as well, because there were teachers who were keen to support me a lot, as my father was rather uh, supportive. And he didn't leave any door open for me not to learn Arabic, even from mm-hmm. that young age, especially being good in, being good in Asar. So, yes. Whatever the books that were needed, even in Bengali language, they were, those were provided to me by my father, especially. No. So, alhamdulillah, the, it really helped me from the young age to be in love with the Arabic language. And primarily, I would also say that Quran is something in Arabic that even if people do not speak Arabic, they at least have the basic of Arabic. Mm-hmm. As Allah says, Quran and Arabia, indeed, we build the Quran in Arabic so that you may comprehend. No, the so part of that comprehend, comprehension, I believe personally, and Allah knows best that going through the Nahu uh, uh, and also Al Arabiya, Al Adab Al Arabi, the Arabic no. literature, in Surf as well as in Nahu, particularly Nahu. When we were going through examples, there were verses of the Quran put into practice. Yeah. So verses are memorized, 
okay, here you go. Find out what is the grammatical, this, that, this mm-hmm. and that. So I had that practice from the very young age, alhamdulillah, and it was continued until even after my undergraduate education. Yeah, I think, I mean, definitely memorizing the Quran, it does give you a lot of vocabulary that when you then come to a book and see, for example, Sayyara or, uh, you mm-hmm. know, Tanzurun, Ta'aqilun, all of this stuff is always, huh? is always, oh yeah, that's like a aha moment, aha moment, like they say in, exactly. in, in America. I don't know if you guys say that in... In the UK, I've been asking for brothers oh, yeah. aha That's moments if they don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So, uh, so what was your. Well, I think for you it was a little bit different because it was your, your parents kind of thing who pushed you. But was there any, any type of turning point or something that happened in. In, uh, in your life that made you or your parents say, okay, he needs to go ahead and learn Arabic now? Mm. <coughs> Sorry. I remember my dad to be really anxious, okay, because there was a moment I was losing Arabic as well. Due to, you know when someone goes through a, teen, a teenage part between the age of uh, 12 and 16, 17, mm-hmm. there was a moment where I had some, you know, down bits, if I may say. Like I was going down and I was totally off the track from my excellence in Arabic language even at that age. So... I had to take a study break and my family was rather quite uh, supportive because of that because I need to I had to pull myself together even at that age mm-hmm. so I had to break for a year or two as I, as far as I can remember so later on you know it was my dad who was so hopeful and so passionate and so emotional in terms of me learning the Arabic the only thing that he could think of was going back to Medina, the mm-hmm. way that I was young and I was learned Arabic, a lot, uh, you know, conversation Arabic. But later on, Alhamdulillah, my dad brought me back to Medina, Alhamdulillah. Uh, he, he, by the way, he still lives in Medina, Alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. The good thing that I still want to, uh, I still, uh, you know, take pride in. No. So, uh, uh, it is Subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of his dua, my dad's dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought me back to Medina. And I remember that as soon as I just entered the Medina, wallahi, as soon as I just got off the plane, the feeling that I had at that time was totally different. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, wait, I didn't have this feeling as soon as I went back to Bangladesh when I was like 10 years old. <coughs> Now that same feeling that I lost, the feeling, mm-hmm. the feeling that, and from there, you know, onwards, Alhamdulillah, it was like an easy ride, literally an easy ride for me. All I had to do is just practice what I lost, and you know, you know, refresh my memory mm-hmm. in terms of reading the Quran first and foremost, then going through. Things like Nahu again, Surf again, Arabic uh, literature, then of course Usul al Hadith, the mm-hmm. and all these things. I found them to be easy. Why? Because Allah blessed me to be in this part in, in Medina, Alhamdulillah, Allah brought me back. And of course, you know, I, I have regret, I have regret because when I was in Bangladesh, I had, you know, I had moments where I totally lost the track. So coming back to that track again, mm-hmm. and the best place was to be in Medina, as you know, Allah blessed me to be there, was a kind of, uh, what do you call, a changing moment in a whole life, really. And since then, Alhamdulillah, you know, things were really super easy. No. One, Quran was in my heart, alhamdulillah, quite often I may revise. And also, contemplation. What do I mean by that? Is it that 
Jadi Allah tu yang kita korang kita boleh nanti nak hilang ke mubarak tu lihat jembar u ayat itu boleh kita dengar ulul albab. So kita the book that will reveal to you O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mubarak um bless lihat jembar u ayat itu so that they contemplate on these on his signs lihat jembar u ayat itu. Now if I just talk the word lihat jembar u lihat jembar u of course we have. You know, I, I went through the teachings of Nahu there, and I also put uh, the thinking of Surf there, and mm-hmm. many other things just to understand the word. You have Nahu there, you have Surf there, then also you have the greater uh, you know, understanding surrounding this, uh, uh, this word. So this was like, wait a second, it thinks it comes back. SubhanAllah. Wallahi, to this day I remember, when I had these thoughts, immediately I would just go to the sujood. Allah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I really shouldn't leave this place. But later on, Alhamdulillah, for the purpose of da'wah, for the purpose of being imam over here, I have been in Europe for like last 10 years. But those moments, if I you know, compare the good and uh, bad, you know, it's really, you know, what do I say? No. No. Alhamdulillah. So, in terms of learning the Arabic language, what was the the actual practical practical method that you used once you you actually got into classes and uh, you know in the formal quote unquote uh, way of study? Mm. I think uh, first and foremost listening and paying attention to what is being said. I was there, alhamdulillah, that was the main thing, because my learning style is this, is whatever I hear, I say. Mm-hmm. That's the good thing. The way that, for example, I'm talking English now, in a uh, British accent, I didn't have this in British accent when I was talking in English. Mm-hmm. So, it's like, you know, when you have like podcast or audio clips that you hear, or when you see people are talking, you are so attentive. And you're listening to how things are being said. That is what helped me, alhamdulillah, uh, one of the ways. Because when I was doing Ula Sanawi, then Sani Sanawi as well as Sali Sanawi, I remember in the Ula Sanawi, I was struggling a bit. To an extent, I remember even failing Mustalah al Hadith in the first semester. But let's the helps of teachers and friends, I found that. So the element of listening attentively is something. I was afraid, and of went to the beach. However, there was a bit of struggling in terms of you know not having the harakat in the words in the books that we were reading, mm-hmm. because you know the Quran is with harakat, no. and everything. That I learned when I was uh, when I memorized the Quran, so that is struggling later on became easier whenever I was listening to the teacher in the anawiyah in marhalat anawiyah, and I was putting the harakat if necessary because sometimes you know at the end of the word you don't know what harakat would be there. Hmm. That is what I was paying attention to, and of course it was really good. Uh, the extreme efforts that I remember putting was in the book of An Nahu. Mm-hmm. In the book of Al-Nahu, as well as uh, uh, the second comes uh, Al-Adab Al-Arabi. So these are the things that made me understand and made me, you know, talk the way that they were talking. Because mm-hmm. it was like, first, it was not like, you know, colloquial Arabic or the local accent that we would use. That is something no. uh, I believe that the future learners of Arabic we should pay attention to. So, so that was in Thano, you said, yeah? That Yes, in Thanawi I'm talking about. Sorry. Alhamdulillah, in the second year of Thanawi, later on things became easy. And I was with, you know, I, I, I was extremely confident. I'm not being, <laughs> this, is, this is what no. I was, uh, this is who I was at that time. And Alhamdulillah, later on I became, you know, in the college you have that a group of, uh, you know, people that would make sure that disciplines don't break, the disciplines don't go. Mm-hmm. So I was in that as well. 
because of my extreme efforts in learning Arabic and I started talking to anyone. I started no. talking to anyone, even even if I, uh, of course I didn't have mistakes, but Alhamdulillah I was in the level that I was 80% good in Arabic. So, so what was the was book you guys studied? In, in the Thanawi, or was it just... Honestly? Was it just the, the book of uh, <coughs> of the uni? Not traditional book. I think the books that were of the syllabus, I can't remember. Subhanallah. Really, it was like a mm. long time ago. I'm sorry. No. I'm no, sorry. because many, many times as well, they have just... They don't even have a actual known book. Like, for example, I don't know, when I was in, in Thanawi in Al-Azhar, uh, we used to do Sharh ibn Akhil. Uh, and we used to do al ibn Malik as well. So it was, uh, you know, like you can tell, okay, yeah, that's the book we, we study in. But in other, in other universities, they just really use the, you know, whatever, whatever they have put together from, for themselves, you know. They have a teacher, Arabic teacher, and he just puts together a bunch of books. So I think that might be the case mm. maybe in, uh, in Medina. Because was it was it the Thanawi in in uh, in Jamia Islami? Uh, what's the name? Jamia Islamia Bil Medina, sir. Yeah, yeah. Was it that that yeah. same one? Yeah, same one. That's the thing. Okay. The, uh, that's what I was gonna say. You know, Jamia Islami Bil Medina Munawwara. Uh, it has three branches. What one you have the Hadith Al Madaniya for mm-hmm. Uh The second one is Mahad Al Thanawi. That is within the campus of the Islamic University. And the third mm-hmm. one was Dar Al Hadith Al Makkiya. That is in in Mecca. Three of them. Are under, uh, yeah, under the Islamic University of Medina. And there is something that we need to pay attention here. Normal Thanawiya study in Saudi Arabia is under Wazarat Al Tarbiya Wa Taalib. Whereas our Thanawiya is under Wazarat al-Ta'lim al-Ali. Wazarat al-Tarbiya al-Ta'lim means Wazarat uh, uh, Ministry of Upbringing and Education. Whereas our study was under the Ministry of Higher Education. Mm. So even from the Sanawiya level, you see coming from, that you had that uh, extreme upbringing, extreme, yeah. you know, uh, extreme level of uh, teaching, in the higher level totally. So the book that we had was uh, by the Ministry of Higher Education would have been different, and it was different, rather. Unfortunately, I don't remember the names of the books. Mm-hmm. Uh, are different in comparison to the books that are for the students under the Ministry of Upbringing and uh, Education. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm coming from? The Alfiya or Nuniyat al Muqayyim, Alfiya or the books that traditionally. Uh, nowadays, the pe- uh, the people are advised, especially the people who are from the western part of the world, were not there at the time. It was like kind of additional subject. If the students feel to do that, Alhamdulillah, it's like uh, an nawafil, if, if I may say so. No, <laughs> but the books actually, <laughs> the books, uh, the books that were taught by the teachers were different in terms of uh, what we know, like uh, al alfiya. No, it is true that when you go. To uh, or al Mutun, like you know, uh, learning things in a po- uh, uh, like memorizing uh, poems, really. Yeah. It would have been easier. How, sometimes, uh, what do you call? Uh, it wouldn't have been that easy. I no, personally no. didn't do. I didn't do that. The only only love that I had was uh, the book of Mustalah al Hadith, Mandumat al Bayqoniya. However, mm. to this day. Still learning how to memorize that, just yeah. so you know. Mashallah. Taib, so yeah. while learning the Arabic language, right? And and I'm pretty sure that well, we actually slightly spoke about this. But do you have any? Can you remember any main aha moment when you was where you was like, oh Subhanallah, like, yeah, this is uh, you know, like that that aha moment, if you know what I mean. Like me, for example, when I was uh, when I started learning Arabic, I was like, you know, we went through the process of of learning the tasrifat. We just we were just focusing on learning tasrifat. Dhahab, yadhab, yidhab, akala, akulu, kul, you know, all of this tasrifat. And then <clears throat> when I when I was learning, when I came to the verb ghafira, uh, yaghfiru, ighfir. Uh, and I memorized the word, and then the next prayer I, I went to, the next salah that I prayed, 
I was like, Rabbi Ghfirli. And I was like, oh, subhanAllah, so this, you know, the, the verb or the command, the amr for ghafira. Huh. And then everything basically starts making sense. So that was one of my aha moments. Do you have any, uh, any moment like this? Well, funny enough that when it came to the dua, the way that you had those moments, I thought that it's just a coincidence. I had these moments too as well, because mm-hmm. whenever I used to uh, listen to the dua, as I was really frequent uh, go- uh, goer to the Haram and Nabawi, especially during the month of Ramadan, I had these moments. SubhanAllah, mm-hmm. I really had these moments. Uh, as I mentioned earlier that I was going through the surf, as you, you know, you mentioned in Bangladeshi style, if I may say, uh, like a uh, additional point, that we had to memorize this. Nasara yansurun nasran fahu wa nasurun wa nusura yunsuru nasran fahu mansurun al-amru minhu unsur wa nahi anhu la tansur mansurani mansurani mansuratun mansuratun and so on and so forth. No, this is kind of Bangladeshi style. Mm-hmm. Whereas I didn't find this in Saudi Arabia. However, when I went through these words, hey, wait a second. I do remember learning the, uh, these words. Yeah. It's a slightly, you know, different. So I did have these moments quite a mm-hmm. lot rather. No. Okay. But on the top of my head, apart from this, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember currently any other thing. But yeah, quite often it was related to the surf because the method- methodology used uh, to teach uh, me the surf as well as Nahu, we had these things, alhamdulillah, you no. know, uh, covered. And I did have a lot of aha moments, if I may no. say. No. It's just that I don't remember <laughs> this one. No. Subhanallah. Uh, Taif, so... Yarfa'u. Yes, Rafa'a Yarfa'u. No. I had these moments when uh, when uh, Imam used to recite, Wa Yarfa'a Ibrahim al Qawaid min al Bayt. Yes, no. Yarfa'u. He's raising it. Yeah. Or he raises it. Mm-hmm. So I did have I did have these moments, especially mm-hmm. in terms of uh, Mubari. Mubari I had a lot in terms of other more than Mabi. No. Taib, so uh, yeah. so obviously right now you have been living in the UK for ten years, I would say. Right? Yes. That's what you said. So um yes. so you know Arabic language it tends in terms of the conversational uh, level, it tends to yani yadof بعد وقت بغير استعمال يضعف the skills يعني. So what will you say without being yeah. humble, without being humble right now, even though in Arabic, what will you mm-hmm. say your conversational skills are from 1 to 10? I would say 10. Without any hesitation, I would say 10. Wallahi, I would say 10. Because, because alhamdulillah, the, uh, you know, as soon as they came to the UK, Mm-hmm. You know, for, first I went to the university education over here that I did human resource management and marketing, which is totally off, uh, uh, off the track that I was on. No. It's totally business. Uh, it is joint honors, double, uh, uh, double major there. Mm-hmm. So when I was studying, of course, I had students from different backgrounds, especially the languages that I knew. So besides Bengali, which is my mother tongue, I knew Arabic, I knew Urdu, and of course, English was the medium when I, was, uh, when I started living in the UK. So mm-hmm. I started hanging around also with the friends that are from Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. because I was living there. Alhamdulillah, I didn't lose that Arabic language since then. And okay. also, first time in my life, I'll tell you this, and this is something really shocking. I haven't done while I was in Medina, as well as in Bangladesh. I haven't delivered khutbah for Jumu'ah anywhere in the world until I came to the UK. No. So I remember giving in Arabic, in English, and in Bengali as well. Three languages in one. <laughs> in one khutbah, one single khutbah. Yeah, that has really boosted my confidence. And since then, alhamdulillah, when I was, you know, giving a khutbah, I was really, really passionate. Even, like, you know, no... Sorry, cut off. You even, said, like, you know... Doing things in Arabic. Yeah, even the uh, things reading in Arabic, I was alhamdulillah really good mm-hmm. at it. Taib. Taib, alhamdulillah. So, um, so what do you think is the hardest part of learning Arabic? The hardest part of learning in Arabic is that when 
primarily if I say that things are not at the right place. Mm. Okay. When I say uh, things are not in the right place, I mean uh, is this that priorities are mixed up. Mm -hmm. Like from the perspective, perspective of an English speaking person. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, first, you know, one thing I learned, let's tell you something here, and it is applicable even to us Muslims as well, alhamdulillah, that when I came to the UK, I had to go through an analysis, self-analysis. Mm -hmm. what, what do I mean by that? First, you need to discover yourself in terms of what ways that you can learn things. What are you good at? What are you bad at? Mm -hmm. And later on, act upon those things that would take you to the desired destination. No. If it is the English, for example, I, I will give you the English, uh, English perspective. My English is better because I remember downloading BBC iPlayer when I was in the UK. Mm -hmm. And of course, I had to put the subtitles on mm -hmm. in terms of reading it and listening to how things are pronounced. This is me. No. Visual learning as well as or, uh, you know, audio learning. So, so what were the subtitles? In what language were the subtitles? The subtitles in what in language? In my mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> the subtitle was in English. The subtitle was in English too as well. Okay, but you need to read so, it to the read. Exactly. Okay. So I, I know that in Arabic language, things have not been developed in that way yet. But there is, alhamdulillah, there are, alhamdulillah, nowadays I have seen that you have uh, Arabic programs being watched by the uh, Arabic subtitle as well. Mm -hmm. So this is good. The only thing is that, that in Arabic language, when we see the subtitle, there are no harakas. That is the hiccup. To this day, it is still there. So, first, the person who is a non-Arabic speaker needs to know what are the good ways and writing things down. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm bad at. If these good ways that can be utilized to learn the Arabic well, alhamdulillah, I should use that. Mm -hmm. So, this is the priority. From the priority perspective, that, yeah, let me try this. I believe that I would succeed, inshallah. And confidence would come only if you know that, if you know yourself better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are people to help you. <clears throat> if the helps are worthy, alhamdulillah, take those helps and later on try to apply for those things. And rather than jumping everywhere in terms of learning Arabic, like, you know, there are some people who are so hyped, so hyped, like hyperactive, I would say. Yeah. But hey, take a step back. Think. Apply those steps that you think would be successful to do uh, uh, to learn the Arabic. Okay. Then take a step slowly. Arabic is something. Wallahi alhamdulillah. I can say that it is hard to forget. And also, the person needs to be really patient rather no. than being carried away. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yes, these are my advice that I would, uh, I would give to uh, the people who would go for learning Arabic, inshallah. No. No. Type, so, <clears throat> so right now, well, obviously, it's been a long time that you know Arabic now, but what do you think, mm -hmm. uh, for someone who, who, or even you can tell for yourself maybe, but from not knowing Arabic to knowing Arabic, what would you, what would you say is, how big of an impact it has into someone's life? Islamically, if I may say so, it changed me a lot. Why? Because Allah blessed me to understand the words of the Quran, mm -hmm. even at the later stage. Subhanallah. You know, when I go for the last couple of years, or dare I say for the last five, six years, you know, when I get, deliver a talk, for example, to a group of people, or let's say we are having a conversation on certain topics, things come to my mind. Why? Because I understand them. Mm -hmm. So when people understand these things, it would automatically change the person from bad to good, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Amazing thing is that Allah chose Arabic language for the Quran. So when we speak Arabic, Wallahi, even if you are not half in the Quran, you would, you would remember, hey, there are some words, these are the words that I'm saying. Some of them are also in the Quran. And quite often people forget that, yeah, Arabic 
the Arabic grammar or things like that are derived from the Quran because there was a time during the Sahaba we noticed that people were reading it wrong and later on we know that it was Amir uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib came up with this uh, Nahu, uh, 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 the Nahu book on those people who were making sure that things are not read uh, 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 wrongly. So even if you're not half of the Quran, you remember, hey, I understand this word. I understand this. I, do, I need to make sure that I don't go off the track. I need to make sure that I'm on the right track. I'm on the good path. Mm-hmm. Even if you are, like, not studying Arabic. No. And speaking of Quran here, I need to say something. Like Quranic Arabic, this Arabic, that Arabic, I don't, I don't know. I personally find it really odd no. and bizarre as well. Okay. There is no such thing that, you know, you learn the Qur'an in Arabic, this, that, this, that. At the end of the day, Arabic is, uh, Arabic is a language Allah chose for the Qur'an, that's it. No. Now, everyone it has just different accents. What? It is in the Qur'an, Allah says, خَلْقُ مِنْ آيَةِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ دِلَاكُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ No. So, difference in tongues is, is there, and also difference in skin color is there. So, if we look at the ikhtilafu al sinatikum, the term that Allah used, despite Allah choosing the best of Arabic language, mm-hmm. there will be certain things that people, the people will take pride in it. And it is also, you know, good. It is not something bad, like he's speaking Arabic in their own way, the way mm-hmm. that we speak English in accents or different ways. Yeah. So, it's not a problem. So, there should, I personally believe that there should not be any difference, like, you know, Quranic Arabic and traditional Arabic is speaking Arabic. No, mm-hmm. Arabic, Arabic. Colloquial, standard, modern. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Khala, so, uh, just to finish, what would you be, what would be a, uh, an advice, uh, advice that you will give to, to, you know, the typical young person who knows, or maybe the revert person who sees the importance of <laughs> learning Arabic? and how to start for them and what to be aware of and what to look up for? Okay, uh, simply I would say that going back to the Quran, as simple as it is, you don't know how to read Quran, that's not a problem. Alhamdulillah, nowadays you have audio recitation of the Quran. Mm -hmm. Keep listening to it. Even if you don't understand, keep repeating it. Mm -hmm. You know, because there are people, Alhamdulillah, so quick in learning that if this way of learning can be utilized towards something that is relevant to the dunya and the akhirah, especially akhirah, which is through the Qur'an, then Qur'an is something that would help us to learn it. Mm -hmm. So if a person is in a constant habit of listening listening to the recitation or the tilawah of Al-Qur'an, wallahi, the person will never lose the greatness in learning Arabic. This is the first and very basic step. No. Wallahi. No. And it has been proven, it has been proven, Walillahi alhamdulillah, whenever someone is so attached to the Qur'an, especially to the listening, and person feels comfortable in listening, uh, it gives him uh, the comfort, or the, the sister's case, it gives her the comfort, then one should not lose that track. No. Wallahi, through the Qur'an, doors will be open. When someone goes through the memorization of the Qur'an, Allah blessed me to be able to be happy with the Qur'an. Alhamdulillah, those were easier for me. Mm-hmm. It is never too late. Even no, those no. young, that is a prime moment for the young students, for the young students of knowledge who are always in a habit of listening to the Quran. Mm-hmm. Wallahi. Then you will see you can go for different avenues for learning Arabic. Even in a basic level, there are Alhamdulillah books available. Whosoever feels comfortable doing so, Alhamdulillah. Hayyahullah. No. Tayyib, barakallah feekum. Wa jazakum Allah khair. Brother Rashid. And uh, f- for all the viewers, inshallah, uh, this has been our brother Rashid Al Madaniyu. You guys can find him in Ireland, inshallah. What was the masjid again that you are? What is the name of the masjid in Ireland? Uh, Castle Bar Islamic Center, which is in County Mayo. M A Y E O, Mayo. You know the word Mayo, now, you just take the word Mayo. Okay. Mantak <laughs> Mayo. Shimal Gharb, Ireland, northwest of Ireland, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So uh, thank you very much for everyone tuning in and watching. And uh, hopefully we see you guys in the next, uh, in the next interview.
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته